youth participation activities. These are the different non-formal uh, learning activities that are meant to support youth participation in the society. And under youth participation in the society, it is meant being active citizen and uh, participate in the decision making processes. And uh, also youth participation projects um, enable all this through uh, cooperation, through exchange of uh, knowledges and experiences. And uh, here um, also as a separate thing is, uh, sorry, is um, underlined uh, that um, participants would develop their personal social and uh, citizenship and participation competences and become an active Euro citizen, which actually means that young people would understand what does it mean uh, to participate, what does it take to participate, what are the competences, the knowledge that you need for that. Um, and they develop also uh, media literacy and digital competences as well. And about the objectives, in a way, I have already mentioned some of them, but uh, it is important to know the objectives of this uh, action type because um, it's also clearly stated in the program guide that whatever activity you're planning to do, it has to respond to the objectives of the type, action type. So the objectives are uh, four, and the first one is also focused on uh, provide, providing young people space to participate and engage in uh, uh, civil society. And the second one is to raise young people's awareness about common values. And here uh, also separately mentioned youth goals and contribution to achievement one or more youth goals. That's why it's kind of important to uh, be acquainted at least with the EU youth goals. Mm, also develop young people's digital competence and media literacy because it's, it is seen as one of the uh, essentials or basics that actually uh, are required to quality participation. And also uh, bring young people together with decision makers, which is also one of the objectives that was in the previous program. But since many of you didn't have this uh, uh, experience in previous program, uh, then it might be new to you. Mm -hmm. So what is important when we talk about uh, youth participation projects? Um, mostly that young people do it themselves. So it's a youth project, which means that young people plan it and implement it. Also uh, in terms of content, it is possible to involve an expert, but I would say that it really needs to be justified and um, it shouldn't be like um, just, uh, just uh, like ordinary training, <laughs> but rather the youth participation uh, dimension should be also uh, uh, thought through. Also, it's important to underline European dimension. So, how each project is mentioned is uh, connected with uh, Europe. And for example, youth goals, um, the one that we were talking before about, um, it is also part or opportunity to connect your project with the uh, European dimension, even if the project is local, because then it gives an idea that this challenge that young people would like to. Uh, kind of contribute into the improvement. It's not only their challenge, but rather other young people in Europe have the same challenges. Uh, in case uh, there are decision makers involved in the um, project, then there should be a dialogue. And dialogue means that young people are engaged in the conversation and uh, uh, also, it requires some readiness from uh, decision makers to be opened for the dialogue. Uh, so here it's just important that it, would, it wouldn't be just like one way communication where a decision maker just tells young people how things are. Rather, um, young people are, support, are encouraged to challenge, to ask questions, to 
understand better and to give the ideas on how things could be changed. Uh, also, um, as I mentioned before, participation competence is one of the central competences when we talk about participation projects. And uh, impact. Mm, it is good to understand what is concrete impact that each project does. Uh, because mm, it's not enough that young people, for example, come together with decision makers and say, hey, we think that this should be done like this. And then decision makers say, yeah, yeah, of course, thank you for your opinion. And then he, the, it stays there. Rather, trying to get most of, of the project, even if this impact is quite small, even if it changed just some management system in school, it is already a very good example how young people can participate in decision-making processes within the school environment. It's a first step. And of course, if you're doing like bigger projects, you just have to really acknowledge what is the impact of the project, what will change for young people after they have participated in activities that the project provided. And a little bit about eligibility criteria. Uh, duration of the projects is the same basically as in Key Action 1, it's 3 to 24 months. Uh, yet the activities are not defined, which means there is no minimum or maximum days that needs to uh, be uh, in each activity. Also, uh, it is one only one <laughs> action type in Erasmus Plus that allows uh, local or, uh, and international projects. But unfortunately, since uh, you cannot apply, then for you, more relevant is, of course, the international activities. This action type is meant for young people uh, in uh, age 13 to 30, which is very uh, average thing in Erasmus Plus, and decision makers, which are 18 plus. Here, as you see, no group leaders are expected to participate. So basically, it's only young people and decision makers. I have already also listed here some uh, uh, budgetary goals uh, that are available. And um, in, in this action type, there is project management budget, which is uh, a lump sum for each month. However, uh, it is not meant for partners. So actually the applicant gets this 500 euros per month. However, in a good partnership, if needed, it is possible to divide this project management uh, um, uh, amount amongst the partners. But also it needs to be justified. So it's not like a salary for a project manager, but rather uh, maybe local activities that are implemented in each country, or maybe uh, some uh, technical support, if, for example, if you would like to use the digital tools, then maybe you need a license or something. Mm -hmm. In case uh, the project is submitted by a group of young people, informal group of young people, it is possible also to um, to apply for uh, coaching. And um, there is opportunity to involve a coach who will help young people to implement the project. However, the maximum days for the coach is 12 days per project. Uh, also exceptional costs, um, and um, maybe I will not go that much in details, but um, another thing that is uh, also uh, available uh, in youth participation project is uh, youth participation activity support, which is uh, activity based per participant. However, it does not include uh, the, let's say, core group or those young people and uh, who are involved in uh, implementation of the uh, project. So, for example, if you have a partner and then uh, you have four young people uh, in, in each country that are actually dealing with the project, that are implementing the project, then this youth, youth participation activity support is not 
meant for them because their participation can be covered from project um, management costs. In case there is a mobility, so for example, if you would like to have um, like a seminar on uh, how how is uh, how it's possible to participate or what are the challenges in part participation in each country, then uh, uh, everyone will get the travel costs covered and also individual support. Individual support is meant for all participants, also for the core group participants. Uh, also inclusion uh, support, which you might have heard that it's now uh, two uh, types of uh, inclusion support. One is lump sum and the second one is um, cost based and also exceptional costs for, uh, uh, for visa and for uh, um, extremely expensive travel costs. Um, the only one limitation here is that the whole project might not cost more than 60,000 euros. And uh, before I ask you if you have any questions, uh, <laughs> I will just give you some examples uh, what can be done. Uh, oh, sorry, what can be done. Um, you can do campaigns and also virtual campaigns, consultations with young people, online trainings, offline trainings, simulations, seminars. You can run questionnaires from young people and then kind of um, pass the results to the decision makers. You can make research meetings with decision makers. So basically, it's as flexible as you can imagine. But the only one limitation here is that it, it should support the objectives of action time. So uh, this is something that I have mentioned before. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, I have a question in chat. If uh, informal group of young people from Armenia be partner uh, in the application? Yes, it can be. So group from program countries. So for example, if you are a a group of young people in Armenia, you have to find a group of young people from Estonia or any other program country, and then you can apply together. So two partner countries cannot apply for this, uh, for anything, I'm sorry, at the moment. Uh, and the deadlines, uh, the upcoming is on uh, already in May, and the second one is in October. Yes. Do you have any more questions? I will now finish my sharing so I can see. Oh, so I have so many people here now. <laughs> nice. Um, I don't know, those who have joined later and I didn't notice that, maybe you have some questions. Hi, Anastasia. Yes, hi. Ask? Yeah, is there a minimum number of the countries from partner and uh, program country? In the participation program? No, because this is, this is the uh, project type that can be run only on local level, so the number of partners is not really defined. Mm -hmm. And also there is not limit for partner country or how many partner uh, organization from uh, partner countries should be and from um, program country? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not a technical uh, technical criteria but it should be balanced so when we uh, advise our uh, applic applicants uh, we usually say that it should be 50 50 not that like someone from one partner from program country submits the application and then there are 10 partner uh, partner countries from neighboring countries basically so it should be balanced yeah and in the same point as the last uh... Mm, a question, it's enough to be one partner country and one program country? Yes, sure? totally uh, enough. Yes, good. it is enough. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, Ramiz. Uh, uh, hi, uh, I already, you already answered the question, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. More questions? Hi, Anastasia, yeah, I had some. Mm -hmm. um, I was one of those who missed the beginning, maybe you already covered the question, but 
uh, you must have thought about some technical details of this project and it's as it's a new um, idea maybe you can give some example like what kind of project it can be like because it looks now quite abstract and it would be nice to have some more clear image some idea uh, it is true, it, and it is abstract. And before we get some first examples of actual project happened, it's like very flexible. Uh, this uh, action type is kind of, uh, it was built on previous Key Action 3 uh, projects from previous program, which uh, meant to kind of bring together decision makers and young people. So like, the real project example I can give you is only one, but it's very limited. So now it is actually possible to do everything. As I said, in the end, you can run a, a campaign and I don't know, for example, go and vote or um, why is important to participate in your hometown or why, uh, I don't know, like anything, even a campaign about youth goals, for example, as an online, uh, online activity, you can, um, have the campaign and you can also organize uh, local and international like seminars or trainings and on, on what these youth goals are and what to do with them and how can we contribute. Um, you can have a study visit, for example, National Youth Council can, or simply Youth Council can go and visit another Youth Council to see how things are run there and to get uh, some practices. So it is very, like <laughs> you basically can do everything you feel like it is needed. So I would say there are two limitations only. The first one uh, that it should uh, contribute to achievement of the uh, objectives of this action type. And I can show you them again. And the other one is uh, it should be reasonable, <laughs> should be justified. So there is no need to like make a very expensive and very big project uh, um, in the sake of making this very expensive project. It should bring some results and you, you are the one who know best what are the results that are needed, what are the realities that are uh, in each country and what are the challenges. So here just uh, reminding you the objectives First one is uh, connected with the opportunity to participate in the uh, civic society. The second one is uh, basically to help uh, to support the integration uh, process uh, in Europe. And also here it's um, uh, underlined the youth goals and achievement of uh, uh, youth goals. And then it's uh, developing development of digital competence media literacy and capacity to participate. So, because they are all connected. So young people have to understand that there are a lot of fake news so they wouldn't follow each of them. So they'll be having like adequate understanding on what's going on. And then bring young people and decision makers on different levels. So these are the objectives. And if the plant activities are needs-based and if they contribute to achievement of these objectives, then it's up to your fantasy. I mean, you can do whatever. And I think it is good because uh, hopefully it will give a space to make something new. Because uh, I have seen so many simulations, which is not bad, but I mean, there are other things that, that are connected to participation and that, that could be uh, interesting. Can I have a question? I'm sorry, uh, Anastasia was first, <laughs> but I will, Yaroslav, you're next one. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I raised my hand and then, okay. Uh, I have a question. Thank you for your presentation, but still it's not that clear for me. Is it only young people or informal group who can apply or it's also partner organizations who, I don't know, engage young people and uh, this is the idea of young people, but the organizations apply. Yes, organizations can also apply. So uh, in, in the eligibility criteria, uh, it's like, in general in key action one so youth organizations um ngos um informal group of young people even social enterprises can apply so just only uh, that are not allowed are like very business focused uh, organization organizations 
Uh, may I ask very uh, a minor question, but still, uh, for me, it's important to distinguish between the formats. What is the principal difference between, let's say, a youth exchange uh, on the topic of youth participation in democratic life and uh, this um, format of youth participation project? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can do both. It depends on, on the impact that you would like to have actually because youth exchange is focused on those young people who participate in the main activity so for example now we came all together and we are kind of uh, exchanging our knowledges our experience and how things are in each country and why young people are challenged to participate but uh, i would suggest to think uh, on participation projects as uh, opportunity to also cover not only those young people who are um, main participants, but rather bring this impact to the larger level. So um, it is actually, it's not forbidden, but, and uh, also in youth exchanges, uh, participation topic, it's, uh, uh, it's not very popular, but it's still present. Um, but I would just uh, say that uh, it about it's about the impact. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Yaroslav? Yes, thank you. Uh, maybe you told this uh, about the quantity of participants, how mm -hmm. many they, they should be and uh, is there some like, limitation? Uh, there is no limitations because as I mentioned, this uh, project could be fully um, online a project, for example, an online campaign or questionnaire or research. Therefore, there is no limitation about uh, about the number of participants, and also no limitation for duration of the activity. So okay. it's really up to you. Mm -hmm. But if there is individual support, so they should be counted somehow. So what is the uh, like approach to counting them? If you say there is no limitation. It, well, it should be reasonable. I mean, if you're making a mobility and this mobility will last for three months, then most probably the NA will not support this kind of mobility. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, also there is a budgetary limitation. So uh, it is in a way it's uh, like the, the, the principle of being reasonable. So I understand. maybe you, the question is different. Um, like, I mean, there is individual support, yeah? uh -huh. so it's uh, like allocated according to quantity of participants. Mm -hmm. And if, if this is some kind of a campaign, local campaign, like it's short, okay, like you say, uh, but then uh, like how to count these people who may join, you, you don't know how many of them, would uh -huh. join, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the difference. Uh, individual support is allocated only in case you have a mobility. Mobility means that people actually have to travel somewhere either within the country or outside the country. If you have a campaign, you don't need participant to travel. So it is covered from project management uh, budget. And for online as well, there is no individual support. No, but I mean, individual support is meant for to host and to basically feed people. So if it's online activity, why do you need individual support? So that's the logic behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you ask participant to travel, which means that they have to leave their home, they cannot sleep there. So you need to cover their costs. So that's that's the idea. Mm -hmm. More questions? Demis? Uh, so uh, and in previous program it here was a project which is combined like several activities, for example, like use exchange training course and somehow. And as I checked said in applications, in it since it's not possible for now, it could be to use exchange connected or to training course connected. And uh, it could be connected here in, in this uh, direction, like to have uh, several mobility activities, which is one of the training course, one of the use exchange or other activities together. Mm. I wouldn't name it like this, to be honest. Mobility within the youth participation project is, um, it's, well, it, it might look like a youth exchange in terms of uh, like, we all came together in one place. We start with team building, la la la, and then we get net digging into the topic. 
and it could be also done as a training course. But here it's important to remember that the, the target group are young people. So you cannot really uh, make anything for youth workers unless it's, for example, it's, um, uh, let's say, a campaign uh, where you would like to raise awareness of um, uh, youth workers in some aspects, for example. So um, I wouldn't say that within youth participation projects, you can do a youth exchange and a training because there are different action types with, with own objectives. You can make a mobility that would support objectives of the, this action type, but I wouldn't name it as a youth exchange. Okay, okay thank you. So then, can I ask? Yeah, sure, sure. We have an activity, uh, so in the beginning to train the young people to develop their own uh, youth initiative and after that they will apply them in the country. Uh, should these people who will train there to have some salary in the budget um, line or not yet? No. No. Uh, and uh, here just uh, I, it was very brief information of the project idea but here also please remember that each initiative should be connected with youth participation and uh, I wouldn't suggest you to make a project writing training um, in within the youth participation activity because it's uh, it it's very it's very okay it can be connected but the connection is very superficial very superficial so I wouldn't suggest you to see it as an opportunity to make trainings on whatever topic. It should be very strictly on very, uh, very well connected to the participation, uh, media literacy, digital competences, and also somehow give the context of um, youth participation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Yaroslav. <laughs> yeah, you saw that I yes. unmuted, yes? Yeah. yeah, I was hesitating. There is a provocative question. Okay. Uh, I, and yeah, I go ahead. Like, how to find interest from the program countries, organizations, to engage partner country organizations? Mm, because here I see, like, the domin dominant uh, audience here is the, mm -hmm. you know, from where? <laughs> from those who will not be able to access the funding first hand so yeah so why they will be doing with us basically their projects if, if they can make them national if they can uh, like uh, uh, target their own uh, agenda political because this is about the political agenda is very contextual so why collaborating with us losers losers <laughs> no <laughs> oh, because you said before sorry you cannot apply and, uh, yeah like, it's not be but it's yeah. uh, not because you're losers because there is no system yet uh, done that yeah, no, I, I other countries can apply <laughs> um well i actually think that many organizations like the international dimension of the project and of the mobility so i would still think that um that um, there are lots of organizations who will be interested so i don't really think that you have to uh, uh, be um, hesitant here however and i would say that um, in partner countries uh, there might be even more uh, the, the topic of participation and active engagement in civic society is on total different level than in most countries in europe for example, I can say only for, I can talk on behalf of Estonia. Uh, our uh, in our in, in culture, it's not really very well supported or super common to like go and express your opinion. So now, for example, we have like quite small group of people uh, who are not agree who do not agree with some new uh, amendments and laws. And I would say the reaction of media and the society, it's, uh, it's quite difficult and it's not really supportive. So I would say that uh, there are many things that we can learn from partner countries. 
in these terms and how to be how to express your um, your position why to do it and um, like even it will not if if uh, the desired uh, change will not be met still why it's important to state what you want and state your opinion so in in this in in, in this sense uh, i would rather encourage this type of cooperation mm -hmm. artur you were next one and vitalia you're after artur thank you very much uh, in your presentation you mentioned that uh, for uh, our region countries we cannot apply so we need to have international one not local one so I'm interested in like how the activity should be planned. Is the same activity if it's like international should take place in both countries if it's like bilateral uh, project or different activities can be planned in different countries. Thank you. Um, it is actually not really stated clearly in the program guide, which um, gives me <laughs> reason to say that you can decide it um with your partners however i would say that if you just if you do only local activities in two countries and that you don't meet at all then why it should be a international project so why apart from getting the grant why do you need this project if you could do it if you can implement it successfully on the local level without having any kind of communication on or kind of, I forgot the word, not communication. So when you don't meet and you don't talk the things through. So I would suggest that definitely there should be one, at least one activity, international activity, where you come together with your partners and participants. And then you have uh, this common moment where you learn from each other and learn something new, and then you can implement some local activities. So, uh, yeah, it's actually up to you to decide. There is no limitation in this sense. Is it okay? Yes? Okay, Vitaly. Thank you. Uh, you presented in the presentation that some example of uh, initiative projects can be seminars online or residential training course organized by young people. The question is, they also should be a trainers or they can invite experienced trainer in it? Uh, basically, they can invite, but there is no extra like budget to cover the salary of the trainer. So yes, it is possible to invite the expert to give the input. Here is just only one, let's say, thing to remember that in the end, it's a youth project. So if organization decides like, okay, we, we do training on this topic and we would like to just do these trainings and young people are like, just come and let's say contribute the or they uh, consume the content. It's not really a very well um, youth participation project in terms of involving young people and in the process. But definitely it is possible to, uh, to invite the expert and uh, because we are not expecting that all young people be super expert on participation. That's why it is open. Um, we have uh, just one second. Uh, I have uh, two questions in chat. Uh, should the organization apply for the quality labor first to be involved in this activity? No, no, no. You don't need it. Uh, a quality label is uh, for other things. So here you can just easily participate as a partner in any, anything you would like to. Um, how can schools join this kind of project? Uh, here I would suggest you to contact your partner because different NAs have different opinions. Uh, Estonian NA thinks that schools are great opportunity to reach young people. So we are supporting schools in uh, participating in Erasmus Plus youth projects. We even have uh, extra trainings for um, teachers because we created um, a school curricula on project writing that would like schools to implement. Basically, it's like um, it's a subject that young people can choose. And during this subject, they will be taught how to write a project, how to apply and how to run it. So we like when schools apply, but I know that some NAs don't 
they're like schools no it's formal it's formal we don't deal with this but in our case we see that uh, each person that works with young people on daily basis is a youth worker so that's fine okay uh, anastasia uh, yes uh, maybe the last question uh you also mentioned the decision makers that also take part in the project. How uh, the partners or how the applicants should justify their participation? Or is it obligatory to have decision makers in the application? Or it's the, the step that when you implement the project that you involve them? Can you please comment mm -hmm. on that? That's a good question. I, I forgot to mention that it's not mandatory to involve decision makers, but you can. And it also depends on the on your project, on your objectives, what would you like to achieve? You can involve them in case it will give an extra um, value to the project, to the impact, then yes. If not, then you don't need it. But you have to really think it through and plan it before you apply, well, well while you're writing the application. Because the amount of, the, the grant amount cannot be changed, can be on, like, it can be only, change to the smaller one. <laughs> so in case you plan to involve more people, uh, we cannot increase the grant afterwards. So it's important to rather plan. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, have a look on the questions. Uh, if you would like to, I can share some project ideas that I have uh, had so far from different applicants in Estonia. So for example, uh, one, uh, one group of young people would like to kind of push uh, sexual education in schools and they're planning um, to make campaign and also to lobby this idea to, um, to the uh, city hall. And also they're planning to lobby to the schools. So they will actually change the way how they, um, how they uh, approach this topic. So this is one of this. So it's um, it's a change that would that they want to make and the process how they take part in the decision making process. This is what actually matters. Then uh, another uh, another idea from not one group was that they would like to change the uh, the leisure time places for young people to create them actually. So uh, they are planning the whole process, how they will collect the ideas from young people, how they will pass it to decision makers, how they will get the, uh, the support, how they will actually co-design the whole thing. So actually in this case, like uh, creating a leisure space for young people is just a result, but it's not the main idea of the project. So it's not the aim on its, on its own, rather like one of the, the, one of the results tangible results. So uh, here I would say when, when I uh, advise or consult young people, I, I try to help them to see the whole process and how they par participate in something, in making the change in the, the local level or, or, or national level. But at the moment we don't have too many ideas. So <laughs> it's uh, really difficult to give you like concrete example and it really can be very diverse. So do we have questions? I have, do you hear me well? Uh, kind of. Yes, uh, just open the video again, I'm sorry. Um, first of all, uh, you started with the key action tree and I saw some uh, traces about key action tree at the end of uh, some sentences there, uh, which is related about um, decision makers, etc. So this, uh, I think mainly this activity is uh, just uh, um, kindly uh, offering or encouraging the youngsters to attend a, a big kind of uh, youth events, uh, like symposiums, like Congress, do I get right uh, to or organize such kind of events too. So uh, I cannot uh, imagine well uh, that how kind of uh, uh, activities like, for example, what we do in the youth exchange. Okay, there are uh, some light training courses. Okay, 
and uh, for mobility of workers we we know it and key action tree okay we just organize several activities but for this kind of uh, this kind of need uh, activities uh, for, can you give much more specific uh, samples uh, mm -hmm. to imagine much more in our ideas mm -hmm. uh, i have mentioned the key action three from pre previous program because this uh, particip uh, participation in projects it's kind of level up <laughs> of key action three okay which means that uh, here involving of uh, decision makers is not uh, mandatory and yes it could be that you will organize a big symposium a big seminar but you really have to think what is the impact that um, um, that will be after the project so making a, a training course on a topic it's or just or on whatever topic is not <laughs> really suitable for for this action type you really need to connect it with topic of participation youth participation and the capacity of participation. So uh, here, as I mentioned at the beginning, you have to think what is the impact and it should be larger than we just came, attended the training and then turned back to our countries. Think about possible local activities. Think about how can you actually make the change? Because big symposiums, uh, well, it of course depends and they, uh, they do kind of uh, open up the, let's say, um, the view of participants and what, what is happening in different countries. They definitely uh, support the development of capacities, give some new knowledge. But is it enough to make a change? So what, what is next step? And the youth participation project, it is not a youth exchange. It is... Um, uh, it can be organized as a exchange of uh, knowledge and experiences, but here important to think about the impact, how it will, uh, or what kind of change will happen with participants and their communities once they are back. And it's not like they will be a better person and will, I don't know, make a Facebook post, let's uh, uh, be more kind and take care of the planet, okay? So really think of the concrete, um, uh, concrete impact. So for example, if we talk that um, in youth exchange, the main uh, beneficiaries, let's say, so are young people who came to this main activities, activity. So they kind of change, exchange, their, their mind has opened up. So they're like, oh, wow. So in youth participation project, you have to think what's next. What is the impact, not only on this group, but larger impact on youth participation in general. Mm -hmm. And about concrete examples, uh, okay, mm, let's say you would like to uh, lower the vote, voting uh, age in your country or in your municipality. And for that, you need to, for example, first of all, make a research, second, make a campaign, and maybe even some local activities. So you would actually lobby. It's a big change. I'm not saying that you have to necessarily take this such a big change, but as an example. So you, through this project, you have means and opportunities to uh, uh, make a background research, make a campaign, make a local activities, awareness raising some, I don't know, trainings for young people, why it is important to vote. Okay, or you can make a campaign about youth goals and brainstorm with young people. What are the challenges they experience in their hometown that are connected somehow, for example, with youth goals and think of some actions they can take uh, to kind of improve the situation. So things like this. And I'm really sorry, I don't have a very I mean, concrete example of because it's uh, completely new. Uh, so thank you uh -huh. thank you and we have question in chat how many countries can be involved uh, it's uh, uh, it could be a local project for program countries uh, so there is no limitation it can be for example one country from a program country which is also applicant and one country from partner countries there is no limitation 
I imagine if you will uh, involve, I don't know, 20, 20 countries and will make all mobility, it will be, <laughs> first of all, it will be quite expensive. And the second, it's also a question about the quality management. So I wouldn't say that you really have to involve all 55 partners you have met in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes, yes, Georgi. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a question about the promotion of this um, activity. Previously, in my understanding, uh, in my experience, the key action three was not so well promoted. So is there any specific measures um, or um, plan uh, to promote this particular um, direction? Because everybody is very much focusing on the usage changes and training courses and not so much interest about this uh, use participation initiatives. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I think it's, uh, in a way, it's uh, each NA that somehow decides how to promote uh, the program in general. But I think the way of promotion is more or less the same. The problem with K Action 3 was the budget, which was very, very small. And the second pro problem with K Action 3 was that in many cases, it's not the first experience that young person gets through Erasmus Plus, because the first one usually it's youth exchange. So people, youth exchange as um, mobility was known for most of the people. In my opinion, for example, uh, and this is something I also always <laughs> repeat when I'm presenting the program, uh, Key Action 3 or now Youth Participation Project is actually even a better start for, for newcomers to dive in the, pro, in the program, especially if uh, there is a need and they would like to make a change in the community, which is luckily in Estonia recently kind of a trend. Then the youth participation project is like best entering point, point for uh, new applicants, for, for newcomers, because there are less risks, there are a bit easier to organize it and, and make a local project. Um, to be honest, I, in my opinion, the new format of uh, youth participation project is very tempting. So I kind of think that once uh, this information will, uh, will be well received, I kind of think that we will have several, um, several projects. And also with Key Action 3, um, it was very, um, how can I say, it was uh, uh, too much regulated. So basically you had to have their decision makers. It was mandatory. And in some cases, uh, that was not the, the case where young people would like to, they did, might not even know who they are. And it's very confusing. And now when, it, like the format is so uh, so like open and you can really improvise and think out of the box. And in my opinion, really there, there is a need to try like new formats and new types or formats of activities because uh, in Key Action 3, I have seen myself like so many simulations like, do we need another simulation or shall we need some, shall, shall we do something else that will kind of make more impact also after the project? Or how, like, you know, because the, these formats are very, very pretty much set. However, even in Key Action 3, we had quite positive projects, uh, examples for schools or where young people actually changed some small things in their community. So, Sorry, I, I don't think I really responded to your question. <laughs> to, to sum up, there is no like European strategy on promoting the youth participation projects, unfortunately. Just spreading the word. Mm -hmm. More questions? You can also write in chat if you wouldn't like to use the mic. Uh, during the friends are generating their ideas, uh, I want to paraphrase one point uh, from my old experiences. 
as you know uh, from very very old fashion there was like uh, 1.2 youth initiatives uh, mm -hmm. so it's something like uh, can be local can we make some initiatives and impact maybe local or uh, in the international level too so i got it like that something similar like this even of course there are differences but uh, generally we can say that or we can uh, maybe focus that uh, some new kind of 1.2 well even in in previous program there was uh, youth initi initiatives transnational youth initiatives under key action two and uh, so yes in a way i would even say more it's like youth initiative key action three and solidarity pro projects but in the youth participation projects the umbrella topic is youth participation and uh, uh, participation in competence and in development so but in a way you're right the only one thing uh, if we compare it with the youth initiatives then i think that partners are a bit worse position because there is no project management fee uh, for them i don't know it might change it might not uh, we most probably will also give feedback to the commission that it would be nice if, if we would like to involve international partners so at least should be also some project management there.